this is Mr. T with uh, another tutorial on our uh, series of integration techniques. Uh, this tutorial will be talking about using a skill that you should have learned in pre-calculus called partial fraction decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition allows us to break a single more complicated polynomial fraction into a sum of similar simpler fractions where each of those simpler fractions contains one of the factors of our denominator. To use this technique the initial fraction must be a proper fraction which means the degree of the numerator must be less than the degree of the denominator. Uh, we'll have an example later where the original problem is not in proper fraction form but we can use long division to uh, rewrite that original problem and create a proper fraction. The partial fractions are composed of multiple fractions, each of which contain one of the factors of the denominator. Uh, there is a special process or handling that's required when a factor is repeated, and we'll get into that also in one of our examples. Partial fraction decomposition can be used to integrate problems where either integration by substitution and or integration by parts hasn't worked. So let's go through an example here and refresh both breaking up our fraction using partial fraction decomposition and then using it as a method for integrating. So we have our sample problem here. Uh, I would always check to see if integration by substitution might work first, so I might let my denominator be my u, which I've shown over here. So I need u prime to be 2x minus 1, the derivative of this. but you know, there's no way I can come up with a multiplier that can turn this x plus 7 into 2x minus 1. So our integration by substitution, the quick method wouldn't work, and if I try substituting and solving for x, that's going to be difficult also. So let's try partial fraction decomposition. So before we do the integration, we have to break this fraction. Now we have a proper fraction here, so we can go straight to the decomposition. Now I'm going to factor my denominator, so this factors into x minus 3 and x plus 2. And partial fraction decomposition says that I can split this into two fractions, one that has a denominator of that factor and a second one which has a denominator of this factor and A and B will be constants, but at this point we don't know what those constants are. We have a rational function here, a rational equation I should say, and one of the ways we learn to uh, solve rational equations is to multiply every term, all three terms, by the least common denominator, which is this. So if I multiply this term by this, the so again, let me just show this, I'm not going to write it next to every term, but we are multiplying every term in the fraction by our least common denominator, which is this. So when I multiply here, the x minus 3 and x plus 2 cancel out, and we're left with x plus 7. Here, the x minus 3 cancels this, so I have a times x plus 2. And when I multiply here, the x plus 2 cancels out, and I'm left with the x minus 3. So this was just a typical technique when we are have rational equations to turn it into an equation without um, fractions. Now we have to figure out a and b, the values of a and b that will make this true. Now this equation is true for all values of x, so we can pick different values of x, and if we intelligently pick those values of x, it'll allow us to figure out the values of a and b. And in particular, what we want to do is pick a value of x that will make this term disappear, and a value of x that will make this term disappear. So if we first choose x to be negative 2, which is the solution here, if I substitute that in, again, this is true for all values of x, so negative 2 plus 7 equals, and here I have negative 2 plus 2, which is 0, and 0 times a is going to cause that term to disappear. So 
So if I simplify, combine like terms, I have 5 equals, now this is 0 times a, which is 0, and here I have negative 5b. So notice by choosing x equals negative 2, I made the a disappear. So now I just have a single letter that I can solve for. And I get b equals negative 1. And likewise, I can choose a value for x that's going to cause my b to disappear. So I'm going to pick 3. So if we put that in, I get 3 plus 7 equals, now I have 3 plus 2 here, so I have 5a. And here I have 0b. So 10 equals 5a, or a equals 2. So now I can bring down my original problem here. So let's uh, divide this. Let's change colors to keep. So this process here was the partial uh, fraction decomposition. So now we're going to use it to integrate. So I can rewrite my original problem into the integral of two fractions. So I can write it into the integral of, now a was 2. And my second fraction, I put in my b, which was negative 1. So this is a 1 over u problem and my u prime is 1, so I'll bring this 2 out front. So when we integrate here, we get 2 times the ln of x minus 3. And here we get minus 1 times the ln of x plus 2 plus c. And we could leave it like this, or we can use our logarithm properties to condense this, so I can turn this into the ln of x minus 3 squared minus the ln of x plus 2. So remember, constants out front become uh, exponents, and then subtraction turns this into division, so I get ln of x minus 3 squared over x plus 2 absolute value plus c and that's our first example so again the key to being able to integrate this was splitting this up using what's called partial fraction decomposition Hi, let's move on to example two. Uh, in this example, we're going to find that we have a repeated uh, factor in our denominator, and we'll talk about how we, what we have to do special to handle that. So we have a proper fraction here, so we need to do the uh, decomposition. So let's first factor our denominator. So I can factor out an x using GCF factoring. And then I can factor that trinomial into x plus 1 squared. So my denominator factors into... So this is called a repeated, fra a repeated factor because it stands for x plus 1 times x plus 1. So when we go to decompose this, we not only need to create a fraction for each of the factors, as we did in the previous problem, but I need a denominator of every uh, power of this up to here. So if this, since this is squared, I also need to add a fraction for x plus 1 squared. If this had been x plus 1 cubed, I would have had b over x plus 1, plus c over x plus 1 squared, plus d over x plus 1 cubed, etc. We're going to do the same as we did in the last example. We're going to multiply all fractions by that denominator and cancel. So on the left side, everything cancels out. So we have 
of this. When I multiply this first fraction by this uh, in the numerator, the x will cancel out. And in the second one, one of these x plus 1's will cancel out, so I'm left with that. And finally, I'm left with c times x because both x plus 1's cancel out. Now we're going to do the same thing again. This equation is true for all values of x, so let's pick some values of x that wipe out some of the letters. So let's pick x equals 0 first because that, sol that solves this uh, factor. So if I put zeros in here, we get 0, 0, we get 6. Here I get 1 squared, so I get a. Here I'm going to have 0 times 1, which is 0. 0 times b is 0, so the b cancels out. And here I have 0 times c. So by putting 0 in, I am able to solve that a is 6. Let's pick one that's going to cancel out these factors. So let's pick x equals negative 1. So 5 times negative 1 squared is 5. 20 times negative 1. Now if I put negative 1 in here, I get 0 squared. So that's 0. That cancels. This will cancel. So I'm left with negative 1 times c, or negative c. So we uh, combine like terms here. I get negative 15 plus 6 is uh, negative 9. And C therefore equals 9. And to isolate and find the value of B, the trick here is we're going to have to substitute in these values of A and pick a different value of x. So let's pick x equals positive 1. That's easy to uh, calculate. So we're going to pick x equals 1. But we now also know that a is 6 and c is 9. So let's plug into our original equation. So I get 5 plus 20 plus 6 equals, now here I've got 6 times 2 squared plus b times 1 times 2 plus c, which is 9 times 1. So we can simplify that. Here we have 31. Here I get 4 times 6 is 24 plus 2b plus 9. So this is 33. And we subtract, so I get negative 2 equals 2b, and we divide by 2, and we get b equals negative 1. So now we can integrate, so we can rewrite our original problem as the integral of a, which was 6 over x. plus the integral of negative 1 over x plus 1. That was b. And plus the integral of 9 over x plus 1 squared. So I'll write that as x plus 1 to the minus 2. So we can use our appropriate integration rule. So when we integrate this first part, we get 6 to the ln of x minus absolute value here, and then minus the ln of x plus 1. And then here we get 9 times x plus 1 to the minus, we add 1, so minus 1 over minus 1 plus c. I'm going to condense this so this 6 becomes a exponent. And this becomes division, so we have the ln of x to the 6th over x plus 1, condensing my two lens. And then this becomes minus 9 over x plus 1, so this minus here, and move the x plus 1 down to the bottom, 
plus C, and we have our final answer here. Again, this answer is the integral of our original problem here, and I had forgotten up here to write the dx, so let's make that correct. And again, our answer is uh, down here.